Welcome in, it is Adrian Lawrence, and as you know, this is the conversation. Fortunately, I am joined by an expert here with some unfortunate circumstances we're gonna talk about, but they will be enlightening. That is gun violence expert, Jonathan Metzl. He's also the director of the Department of Medicine, Health and Society at Vanderbilt University. Thank you so much for joining us, Jonathan. Glad to be here. Yes, yeah, so Jonathan recently in my hometown, six people were killed, 12 wounded in Sacramento. And it was something that was extremely shocking for a number of us, especially since we do know that we have these mass shootings at all times. But this was one of the deadliest shootings in Sacramento history and police believe that there is some gang activity involved. But it was also just state or just blocks from the California state capital. What is going on when it comes to gun violence here in the United States? I mean, every shooting is a tragedy and we should never normalize this. Every time there's a shooting, we should think, what can we do to stop this? But unfortunately, as we know in our country, we have a patchwork of different kinds of laws. So if one state has very tight gun laws, the state next to them or three states away might have really loose gun laws and you can just drive guns in. We have loopholes through through what are called ghost guns. We have loopholes through through gun shows. And so it's just too easy for the wrong people to get guns and we just don't have the means to stop them. And so even states like California that are trying so hard to do everything right and have laws that do reduce on an aggregate level gun death. Even those states, because of the patchwork of, of really America, they also see the, this kind of tragedy. And 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 just again, every everyone is a tragedy, but I agree with you, this particular shooting was particularly jarring given the circumstance. Absolutely, and you know, and police, I know they have arrested, I believe, at least three people involved, but they've yet to reveal what type of weapons were used in the shooting. But they have said that more than a hundred rounds were fired. Like, who needs a hundred rounds or more? It's this isn't some kind of Mortal Kombat situation. This is suburbia. What's going on? You know, we, this is a decades long fight. I mean, part of the issue here, of course, is that um, the capacity of these magazines, of the magazines and the guns, the way the guns fire, um, it's just too easy to get these particular kinds of weapons. So certainly there's an issue of, I mean, really what we have is a civilian arms race. And and so if one side has guns, the other side has guns. Um, so that that's part of the issue. Um, and and then again, it's just I feel like there's a lot of resignation. Certainly, I think that before the pandemic hit, there was a lot of optimism that the um, you know that things might change. We had a 2018 election that was very strong for gun control. Uh, the tide seemed to be turning at, at, for a moment there. And then what happened was the pandemic hit. We sold millions and millions of guns, so there are just millions more guns on the streets right now. And so it's really a toxic combination of too many guns. And not really that effective laws across the country to stop them. And so unfortunately, Sacramento happened, but then we we also had a horrific weekend of, of gun violence across the country. So unfortunately, we want to stop and we want to grieve that shooting. But also there have been countless shootings just in the days and weeks since since that tragedy. Yes, and that's something that you did note that I remember well from the pandemic how essentially the gun shops in my local area that down in LA were sold out. Everyone was trying to get a gun on their hands during the pandemic when we're supposed to be in lockdown. And so now that things have let up somewhat and people are outdoors more and more active, do you think that we're going to see an uptick in gun violence as a result of so many people being armed? Well, we are we already are seeing an uptick in 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 particular. I mean, the shooting we're talking about here is a homicide, right? I mean, we have these crazy divisions of is it a mass shooting or a gang shooting? I don't like those divisions. They're all people are dying in in every one of these kind of shootings, and we should think of all shootings the same in that regard. But it's also important to note when you think about the pandemic, a lot of people rushed out and bought guns who had never owned guns before, and so there were a lot of guns in homes, particularly homes of people who weren't previously gun owners. And so the risk isn't just gun homicide, most gun death in our country is gun suicide. And then there's also partner violence, accidental shooting. So the risk factors for all these other kinds of shootings went up, even though those kinds don't make it to the news. And unfortunately, what we're living with now, it you know even before the pandemic, 
393 million people in this country and well over 400 million guns. There's more than one gun per person in our country. And so we're gonna have to come up with some kind of new creative solutions because just limiting point of sale gun purchase, that that ship has sailed. It's it's really, where, where do we go from here? And I think that's really gotta be the question. I also liked your point in terms of not trying to decipher between whether mass shooting or gang violence, cuz that was something that um, I had heard from a number of friends in Sacramento who are in the healthcare industry as they have a very large nursing doctor physician um, care set up here in the Sacramento area. And the thought of, well, why wasn't this getting the attention it deserved? What was the response to it? And the nurses I talked to said, "Oh well, it's because of the color of the people who are involved. And oftentimes it's this thought that mass shootings impact white people primarily. And this thought that, oh, it must be gang violence or something impacting black people, which seems, or black and brown people, which seems more of just um, racist dialogue as opposed to recognizing that everything is human life and that none of this has to happen no matter what. And I so when we talk. And when we talk when we talk about getting on top of this gun violence, you know, it seems that there's this new frontier out here when it comes to California's gun control. And you can even see in the national gun control debate about curbing the prevalence of ghost guns. Those are those firearms that are built from parts that are sold without serial numbers and they're easy to um, to sell and to buy um, across states and whatnot. So what is going on here? Because I understand Biden said something about that earlier this week about uh, ghost guns. Well, two important points that you made in that excellent question. First is that we've had a binary, we've had a particular divide. We call one thing a mass shooting and that's innocent victims and, and they're horrific and they're jarring. But then when we call it a, a gang shooting or an urban shooting or something, it's almost like American society is like, oh well, that's to be expected because of the violence of the context or the situation. And so I really think it's important that we get away from that binary. Any shooting that's a multiple victim shooting should not be happening in a country like ours. And I do agree with you that it really has served as a racist binary, a, a racially charged binary. And so we should be wary of that. Now that being said, ghost guns, and President Biden took at least a starter action on this. And the issue with ghost guns, we talked before in the conversation that there are huge loopholes in just how you can get a gun and who can get a gun in this country. And one of those loopholes is you can just order the parts for a gun on online um, or you can get a kit to get a gun online. And those guns, when they come, they're not registered. There's no, anybody can do it. There's no background check. It's it basically, I mean, I would say it's the Wild West, but it's actually much harder to get a gun in the Wild West than it is to get a ghost gun now. And so they're seeing a rise of these kind of guns, particularly in homicides, um, because they're not traceable. And the people who buy them don't have to go through the background check system. And so there have been a call from police and in and, and communities and cases like New York to really see is there something we can do and at, at least the Biden administration took I think a first step toward regulating ghost guns. You would think it would not be, it shouldn't be controversial at all. Like these are not legally obtained guns. Um, and so hopefully this is the beginning of at least some issue people can agree on, but who, who knows right now. Yeah, and it's also a very scary thing knowing that California has some of the strictest gun laws, uh, yet still is facing these mass shootings uh, and also the fact is that you can't necessarily stop these ghost guns. But I also understand that Governor Gavin Newsom has uh, talked about putting additional legislation in place. But again, if you can't track these things, how would you stop them? I'd love to hear your expertise and what, what do we need to do? Well, in terms of the ghost guns, there's an very easy fix. I mean, that's what we're starting with, which is um, just make that process. It's no different than buying a gun. So. You should have to do a background check to get a ghost gun, um, and the parts themselves, particularly the parts that are the most, you know, lethal, should be trackable, right? So that that is not complicated at all. Um, but that that's a very easy first step. Um, but I think the other part is, at, you know, there's a kind of resignation when a mass shooting happens in a place like California or Chicago or you know New York. People say, well, this thing happened here, and we have tight gun laws. Therefore, gun laws don't work. That's certainly what the pro gun side advocates. Um, but but I think that's the wrong lesson, right? I do still think that 
particularly places that have reasonable gun laws and particularly they're surrounded by other states that have reasonable gun laws. They have fewer mass shootings, but they also have fewer of many other kinds of shootings that are much more amenable to gun laws. And so with there are fewer gun suicides, there's less partner violence. And so I think it's hard to, I mean, it's, it's of course understandable to say, man, what more can we do? But it's important to note that gun laws are are generally effective. They're just so patchwork that it's hard to really create any kind of any kind of coherent strategy for our country, which is really what we need. Yes, I definitely think the strategy is necessary. And now that we've seen kind of the NRA, it almost seems like they've taken a step back at least with the whole bankruptcy and a lot more conversations. But it still seems that they have a stronghold on a number of individuals in the legislature. And so I guess if people are going to try to go the more democratic route, is there anything you'd suggest they do? Uh, vote, run for school board, run for local elections. I mean, the most important part about the NRA is not the finances of the NRA right now. It's that the NRA has appointed so many judges across the country and judges, as we're about to see with the Supreme Court, have more sway than anyone on on gun policy. So one thing, of course, is to get involved in the democratic process. Um, the way the way people were doing before, because voting and having the power to put in ju- the judiciary really is is a very important site here for, for this issue. And then again, I I just really do believe that this past week has been a wake up call for everybody. It's kind of I mean, there's so many scary things happening in in the world right now, but I do think we need to get recommitted to this issue and really try to imagine not just how we can stop mass shootings, but how can we stop what we call the upstream drivers of gun violence because gun violence violence is linked to housing insecurity, poor job prospects, economic despair, neighborhood effects. And so it's also how can we fix the larger social factors of which gun violence is a symptom as opposed to, in addition to continuing to try to legislate for for responsible gun laws. All right, well, thank you so much. I really appreciate that. That's gun violence expert, who's also the director of the Department of Medicine, Health and Society at Vanderbilt University, Jonathan Metzl. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks so much. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, I really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun, but you also get Playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.